Morning, everyone. Hope you're doing fine and dandy. The day after the night before, we've had the Fed, lots of moves, lots of no one knowing what's going on, but lots of things. Morning, Kay. How are you, mate? Morning, Ryan. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, ready to uh, ready to rock and roll again today. Yep. Uh, we're not done with the central banks. Oh, no. Bank of England to come. And, well, is it SARB today as well? Oh, yeah. The funniest central banker of all is uh, on today as well. Yeah, might have to tune in to him uh, for a bit of uh, popcorn watching. Right, lots to get through, obviously. So uh, let's get stuck into it. Um, over in China, their VP, uh, Vice Premier, says that they're willing to work with the UK to restart an economic and financial dialogue, promote trade and investment, liberalisation and facilitation, uh, and expand cooperation in finance, the green economy, biomedicine and AI. That's according to state media. Um, whether that uh, gets any traction, we yet to see. Still, a lot of Western countries are not happy with uh, what China's been up to, uh, namely in bed with Russia and Ukraine and all that sort of stuff. So... Uh, it's nice to talk, but uh, we'll see if it comes to anything. Um, over in Japan, the head of the Bankers Association says that the industry is seeing more inquiries from individual customers concerning the impact of interest rates and fixed rate products, such as for housing loans. Um, that's a bit of caution for the Bank of Japan to take into consideration while they think about hiking rates further. Um, it really is. It, it does bring home the situation in Japan where getting rates up uh, 10, 15 BPs a clip um, to a lofty level <laughs> as they are now, how much uh, pressure it can put on a population that's used to rates being sub zero uh, for so long and low enough for so long. So uh, that's one of the things that falls into uh, as I say, the category of worries for uh, the BOJ. Uh, how much sway will they put in things like that, Kay? Oh, uh, I don't know, Ryan. I, I, uh, um, it, it, it's never, it's Japan. That, that's always what we, we can't forget. It's, it's not really... Um, the Bank of Japan independence is... is, is up to a certain point, and uh, but they will always take into account uh, what politicians or 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 um, even like you know the the, the uh, unions and stuff are, are going to say. So um, yeah, I yeah I don't know. I for for if if we look forward to to this meeting, for instance, I don't think it's going to change too much because they're not expected to do much. But uh, it it could just. Uh, um, impact their their longer term uh, way of thinking right yeah exactly um personally for for the meeting tomorrow i'm still expecting maybe a bit more of a hawkish tilt um yeah, but, or at mm -hmm. least continuing comments to yeah, they need to keep the momentum going uh they don't want to you know give up what they've gained so far with talking no. about rate hikes so i think we, we're probably just going to get a bit of a push on that side of things maybe yeah, yeah. a clearer mm -hmm. suggestion of when they're going to hike next yeah, in in words, uh, I agree, but uh, in 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 actions, I don't think they do anything right now. And um, and it's not only to to monitor what's happened or or, or that big uh, yen appreciation. Also, I think it's um it's perhaps more to do with these these LDP elections coming up. Uh, they they don't want to be seen as uh, uh, as throwing uh, politics upside down either. So as I said, it's it is Japan, right? So. I don't think I don't think they will change anything to the rhetoric that they will hike rates because they can keep it there as well because we see the JGP yields um well at least not going higher they are not coming off with all the rest of the of of the yields but at least they are not going higher so they still there's still no uh well, well, how shall I say there's still no way of of going like okay we have come uh, far enough not not in the way that We've seen, <clears throat> for instance, um, U.S. bond markets, European bond markets, other bond markets front-running and, and front-loading what the central banks 
will do and 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 maybe doing in in Japan it's more stable because they are on a on a on a hiking path so it 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 didn't really come down but they can keep just the the half hawkish rhetoric uh, going uh, without doing much tomorrow yeah exactly um right coming over to those guys down under over in australia we had uh, some employment data out which was modestly good um the employment change was up 47.5 thousand so well eclipsing what was expected 26.4 um however the bulk of that well the majority of that was coming in full in uh, part-time employment because as you can see full-time employment actually went down so part-time jobs which isn't necessarily a, a strong signal jobs is jobs that's always good but uh, you want them more in full-time than part-time uh, participation rate stayed unchanged uh, as did the unemployment rate um, so the fact it didn't get worse is probably a bonus there so overall a moderately uh, good um, jobs set of jobs data there from Australia uh, which has helped uh, the Aussie dollar in part this morning uh, amid what's going on with uh, the US dollar generally. Um, Norges, they kept their rate unchanged as expected at 4.5%, uh, saying that they're going to keep their rate there all being well until the end of the year when then in Q1 2025 they will look to start a gradual rate cutting cycle, easing cycle. Um, Governor, uh, well, they also... Uh, reduced their inflation forecast for 2024-2025, unchanged 2026, and the same for GDP came down a few pips, 24-25, unchanged for 26. Uh, Governor Bashe said that rapid inflation decline is not expected to continue, and they said their rate path implies slightly faster rate decline through 2025. So, once they uh, start cutting rates, it could be a bit of a faster process than they previously thought. Okay, any uh, thoughts from you on the uh, rate stuff from Norges? Yeah, as I said, uh, if you don't want your Nor Norwegian kroner to weaken, stop selling it. Um, <laughs> well, although the amounts are small. Yeah, and um, mm, there was a bit of a line that that if uh, Norwegian kroner uh, would, would continue to weaken, they... Um, they could uh, uh, they could actually go the other way around, but I, I I think it's really not in the actual plans to 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 hike again. But uh, yeah, um, what can I say about uh, about this? I, I it was mostly all as expected to keep the rates uh, still until the end of the year. Um, they are struggling a little bit with the overall. Uh, uh, we know that the Norwegian krona versus dollar, for instance, has strengthened, but uh, everything has strengthened uh, versus dollar mainly. Um, yeah, they're still a bit worried about the the, the weakness of the krona, so that that's one reason why they're keeping it uh, the keeping yields uh, unchanged right now. So they reduce uh, or even do better on the differentials versus uh, versus other countries. Um, but I don't think it changes much. It, it's it's really, as we can see as well, Norwegian Krona has been plugged on to the uh, moves that we saw in uh, in oil and gas, right? So uh, at the at the the lowest of the Brent prices, Norwegian Krona hit it, its lowest as well on this round, and uh, now with uh, Brent coming back up. Uh, and the dollar being uh, being a bit lower, it's uh, it's coming down in sympathy. Let's also not forget that Scandinavian currencies are a bit uh, are linked to to what risk is doing as well. So um, besides what the central bank may do, um, Norwegian krona will be driven uh, by uh, by risk as well. So risk is doing better. Uh, Norwegian krona is also doing better. Uh, also, we can we can see the same thing in uh, in uh, Swedish Corona, for instance, as well. So I don't think the Norges Bank changes a lot to the to the global picture of uh, what's happening in Norwegian Corona now. Uh, the market has uh, probably bigger fish to fry. Yeah, that'd be my thoughts. Uh, some big fish it is as well. Um, over at the ECB, ECB's Nagel over in Germany, and uh, some strong comments says inflation is currently not where we want it to be. Uh, the ECB must demonstrate it has the staying power to defeat inflation. 
Uh, it says upcoming wage deals in Germany likely show rapid increases. Um, hence why he's being so cautionary and uh, warning about inflation because uh, they're set to have a big uptick uh, of wage inflation over there. Uh, then added that intervals between potential rate cuts may vary. Uh, will not commit to any future rate decision. Uh, the Germans are in a bit of a pickle, mate. They've got uh, potentially high inflation coming in and uh, an economy that, that seems to be uh, tanking. Um, so they want uh, higher rates on one hand and lower rates on the other. Have you got good news from uh, Germany? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They they need uh, they need uh, the the Rhine uh, uh, water levels to get back up, mate. To to get back out of the out of their slump. I there, there is um, yeah. Uh, that's just been the all time high. Uh, as Gavin says, that that's probably different right now. But yeah, I mean the. The supposed engine of, of Europe is uh, not even sputtering. It's uh, it's just come to uh, to a virtual standstill, right? Um, in towed behind at the moment. The likes yeah, of, exactly. Uh, um, like the Spain and Italy and Greece and everyone else, all the other pigs yeah. are uh, pulling it along. Yeah, and, and you know what? There's uh, there's also a bit of politics going on because they are the they are one of the countries in Europe that don't want to like. Cut the bridges with uh, with China, so there's there's a bit of um, China perhaps in in there as well. China needs to revive for Germany to to revive to buy uh, to buy cars and whatever not. Um, yeah, it's I I don't know I, I don't know about Germany. Uh, we we've historically seen that Germany has uh, has uh, the capacity to get out of slums uh, and and in a and in a big way. But uh, today, I'm uh, I'm really failing uh, failing to see what in the immediate is going to to pull them out of uh, to pull them out of the, the situation they are in right now. Yeah, it, it, every, every day it seems more and more that yeah. uh, they put too many eggs into uh, the China basket, really. Yeah, and, and, we, uh, and we don't and we don't have too much good news either. I mean, ruling parties can't can't virtually do anything because. Uh, the 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 elector uh, veers to the right, uh, and 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 they're getting more and more blocked. And, and I don't know. It's it looks like a bit of an atrocious situation right now. Are they? Yeah, exactly. Uh, one we need to keep an eye on. Um, right over in the US, um, we'll get stuck into the Fed in the moment. But yesterday, a little bit of data out. Um, we got the NBA data coming out, uh, which aside from showing a uh, solid pickup in applications, mortgage applications. Uh, the 30 year rate came down uh, 14 pips. Um, so that is playing into what we've seen. We probably expect another drop in it now that the, the, the Fed's gone 50, but these mortgage rates were coming down already in anticipation of uh, a Fed cut coming. Um, activity has picked up quite significantly in refinancing purchase index, the index as a whole, um, which again plays into what we were talking about, financial conditions. You know, these rates have been coming down for quite some time, even before the Fed cut yesterday. So that's the market already planning ahead for rate cuts. So those financial conditions have been loosened and they're going to be loosened even more with that uh, 50 pip rate cut as well. Um, more soft landing data from starts and permits. Uh, a couple of months ago, we were on a three-month losing streak. Now, uh, I believe we're on a two-month positive streak. Permits coming in above expectations, 1.475 million. Housing starts, 1.356 million. So uh, a decent uh, bounce in those. Uh, and again, low rates or expectations of low rates could be helping that as well, financing for building projects, obviously getting cheaper and uh, obviously mortgages getting cheaper as well. So maybe the US will stave off a uh, potential mortgage blip from all those high rates and it will get the housing market moving. This is one area, Powell, and we'll, as I said, we'll talk about it more, but one of Powell's things was behind the 50s reasons was that it will help the economy in its soft landing and it could bring about increased activity. If you're going to see... The effect of rate hikes, uh, which usually take a few months to come through, you'll see it early in things like housing. Um, as I said, housing, finance, mortgages, they're going to be affected much quicker for rate cuts than anything else. So that's going to be an area to keep an eye on moving forward to see how these rate cuts are doing. 
Um, Bank of Canada had their minutes out and uh, a bit of uh, fence walking from those guys over there. Uh, they still see uh, some risks from higher wages stoking services inflation. Um, but uh, during the meeting, they discussed a scenario where the economy could rebound faster than expected. And in that case, it might be appropriate to slow the pace of cuts. But they also discussed a scenario where the economy and labour market could weaken and then it might be appropriate to speed up the pace of cuts. Um, one thing Powell's done now is uh, let the 50 BP cut cat out of the bag. Uh, he's opened that can of worms now. So we, we're already pricing a 50% chance of the next BOC rate cut being a 50. Um, we're going to be doing that probably for many other central banks as well. Um, right, so over to it all. The Fed cut rates by 50. Uh, they see rates at 4.4% at the end of this year, 3.4% at the end of next year. So it was a bit of a drop down in the old dots. Uh, there was one dissenter uh, who was Bowman who wanted a 25 pip cut, uh, one of the big hawks there. I'm a bit surprised personally that uh, she was the only one, but uh, it just shows you what they'd be, the thinking's like over there. Um, there was in the statement, and it, this is a bit of a weird one, um, because I read the statement and it wasn't, there was no significant uh, pointing towards why a 50 over 25. Um, there was slightly stronger rhetoric uh, on protecting the jobs market, i.e. making sure that uh, it doesn't weaken too much. Um, obviously still watching inflation, uh, though Powell took a bit of a victory lap on the progress so far during the presser. Um, but the statement itself was pretty meh. Yes, they're watching jobs. Yes, they're still fighting inflation. Yes, they're still supporting the economy. But there was no reason in there why a 50 over 25. And it took some 20 minutes into the presser before we got an answer to that question um, with Powell saying that they aren't behind the curve, but the reason for the larger hike is that they didn't want to end up behind the curve. Uh, a lot of analysts and uh, banks and whatever this morning calling that very fact into question because he made plenty of references why the economy was doing well, which almost seemed to talk up why a 25 would have been just as an appropriate response. Uh, it did say if the economy remains solid, we can dial back the pace of cuts. Equally, if the labour market deteriorates, we can respond. Uh, he said the progress, uh, the direction of our process is towards a sense of neutral. So they're still trying to find where their neutral level is going to be. Um, he said no one should look at 50 BP cut and think this is the new pace. Well, he's certainly blown that out the window already. Um, so overall, we made a bit of a, a mess last night in the press. He was a bit all over the place, this one. Not uh, the, the composed how that he was usually k um is that a sign that they were worried about how the 50 would go down um no i think it uh it uh, depicts because if i read it correctly the initial votes were like just a, a small majority to go for 50 and then of course they build a consensus around it uh, that's that's how i think it works uh, if i'm not mistaken and then uh, uh, people can stay dissent, uh, dissented like, like Bowman did. I think it reflects the fact that there was only a very small majority going for the 50 BP cut initially. Um, and uh, I, I, I think the, the 50 somewhere reflects what um, Powell started to say, like, yeah, no, a couple of months ago, eh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, even before Jackson Hole, that he didn't uh, really like what he saw on uh, on the um, on the unemployment rate uh, to to just name that one um, and uh, yeah explaining it was a bit tough I think also because of there was not a clear like the, it, it was not unanimous the 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 fifty um, and and especially not initially if again if I read that correctly. Um, and and that's perhaps why I think the the fifty is is um, you you know we were we were ourselves somewhere fifty one forty nine uh, twenty five or fifty and I yeah. and I it, it looks as if the Fed initial vote also reflected exactly that 
uh, th that it was a very close call between the, the 25 and the 50. I think the 50 is really reflecting what he said. We, we, we want to support the, the, the jobs market. We want to support the economy. Um, but um, yeah, and, and and that's really what I'm what I'm taking away from uh, from it is is showing the support, and that's basically the reason for uh, for the fifty, and um, also the the fact that they are like if you take the the mid rate where the Fed funds were like five thirty seven and and a quarter, it was it was a, a very high rate, right? So there was a lot of room to just to start with there. And also the market already front front ran and front loaded uh, uh, potential cuts to come in a heavy way. And traditionally, historically, they are not like telling the markets, they, they, they say if the market price is in like humongous cuts, they are not going to say like, no, we don't cut or we hike, you know, they, they, they usually tend to go somewhere in the way of the markets. But he can't really say that <laughs> openly during a press conference, right? Yeah. He, he can't say, he can't go out there and say like, oh yeah, the markets are right. I mean, that, that is not how uh, how they function. But um, yeah, um, that's what I take from it. I, and um, of course, everybody can comment uh, he wasn't feeling at ease, whatever. But if you look at it in the, at the end of at the end of the, the the press conference, and then you look at the whole press conference again. Yes, they cut fifty. <clears throat> they look to do 25s on 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 the meetings to come continuing because they revised their uh, projections for for inflation um lower they widened just that slight bit the the the, the band and increased it slightly um and that was a good point by magics in our room by the way if they increase the range the expected range of of the unemployment rate it also gives them the liberty of only doing 25 if if it only ticks up by 0.1 percent for instance uh and and not going to hit straight away the, the top end of their expected range so he keeps everything open um and and now we go we we really go back to um to to data dependent on the next jobs report um so yeah i think there was a there was uh logic in what they did but then again, uh, uh, over the presser, he did uh, he did the same exercise again, walking uh, walking all sides of the uh, of the aisle and uh, and uh, going up and down the rows a couple of times, especially towards the end. There, there he went completely uh, left and right, <laughs> left and right in, in two minutes time at the end of the yeah. at the end of the presser. So um, I think it all reflects the um, the uncertainty there was about the size of the cut, but it does. Give them some freedom in in the next actions, but putting in place a, a, a kind of scenario where it is like we are getting to we are going to cut twenty fives for quite a while, and, and and that's what I'm taking away from uh, from the market really, and that is yeah. more risk. Yeah, uh, well that's that's the next question. What what are we seeing here? Are we seeing risk on because a Fed cutting fifty? is being seen as that's going to support the economy. It doesn't feel that way because otherwise you, you might think that the dollar should be strengthening on the back of that and yields should be strengthening on the back of that. Or is this the market seeing a, an uber dovish Fed and going that way instead? What's I, mean, I think the read is here we will support the economy. Yeah, I, I think the read here is we will support the economy. And that is, that is since the bond market already front ran, a lot of cuts and, and even the, the 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 market for in 2025 like uh well was really even front loading a lot more than 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 what may uh what may be expected yeah. but since he, he kind of gave them the 50 the bond market doesn't didn't find it necessary because we haven't um we haven't moved an awful lot right on uh yeah we had you had those algo bleeps and uh and whatever you can uh you can think of but if you look at uh where the 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 tents were before uh, the announcement and after the announcement, you're not in a in a majorly um, panicky market where 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 they have to uh, rethink their 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 whole book. Like we have seen a couple of times, like post pandemic, where the bond market goes like, "Well, this is not the right decision. Let's go all 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 the other way around." It doesn't seem the bond market has to do that. And if you have a stable bond market. That could actually also be good for risk. And then um, 
this is kind of what we are we are we are seeing now reflected in uh, in in the market right now. But the thing is, Ryan, it's all fragile. We we are what is it um, two weeks away for from the next jobs report. If 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 that's a crappy one. Then, then this 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 whole card house uh, positive risk uh, could could completely fall apart as well. But in the meantime, I think the risk market takes it as pretty good because the bond market is stable. We we are um, they, they are saying we are going to continue to cut. That's reflected in the in the dots. They they put their inflation expectations again uh, a, a tenth or so lower. That's all. Uh, that's all positive as well. So that is what we are trading right now. Once the dust settles, yesterday was a bit of a. I mean, no, nobody knew where where to go. But they, first of all, they sold massively dollars. Then they bought. Then they bought it. Then then uh, then then they went completely the other way around again, uh, buying dollars. And uh, and then uh, in, in Asia, they they did like a pretty uh, wonky uh, session as well. Uh, both both sides of the of the alley but um we are seeing now that that you see and and i'm looking at not only the dollar but you look at some of the risk pairs they are doing uh they are doing pretty well as well yeah yeah pretty much so i think yeah i think this it's still difficult to say okay fed's done this is a direction like you say i think there's still a bit of shaking out to do perhaps and market really gonna pick a side and decide what it wants to do and as, as we've been saying you know yeah, one one bad data point, and we're back playing the Dovish game again. Mm. And the fifties are uh, expectations are rising, and all that sort of stuff is happening. Um, so that that theme hasn't gone away. And as we've been saying all week, the, the 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 rate cut cycle is starting. They will be getting rates down. They want to get rates down to a neutral level. Okay, that's the whole aim. You know, as well as protecting the economy, inflation, all that. You know, they can't have rates up this high for too long, so mm -hmm. they want to get them down. That's not going to change. All we're going to be doing is seeing how the market wants yeah. to interpret the data points yet again. Yeah, and speaking about the uh, the neutral rate, Ryan, um, and we get a lot of questions about where is it? Um, who knows? I mean, yeah. it, and and that brings also the Derridge, Derridge's question in there. Has the election played a role in this decision? I don't think so. Uh, but but of course it's never it's never far away from from the thoughts because it's it's a month away. But uh, I don't think the election has played a role. Um, but the thing is about about the neutral rate, we don't know because if you talk about the election then and imagine that we get Trump, um, we we could be looking at the at inflation ramping higher again, and that and and that they're they are not going to uh, to like that at all. Um, so it is it has it has and not played a role and where the neutral rate will be is anyone's guess right now and and the neutral rate could actually depend in parts on what happens during the elections that that, yeah. is, that is a potential that's a possibility uh, ask me okay. now, i think the neutral rate is somewhere uh, a, a, a healthy dose above where inflation is because I think in this round, at least in this round of the cycle, they will want to end up somewhere with some kind of positive real rates because that that's always a little bit better um, globally if you have yeah. positive real rates for for the for the saver um, for for the economy. But in the meantime, you bring the rates lower so you don't hamper um, economic uh, uh, like investments and uh, and things like that. So for now. The neutral rate is is a wild guess. Imagine that we stall at two percent inflation. I guess the neutral rate is going to be somewhere two, three quarter, three percent. That that's a rough, rough guesstimate. But hey, get a get a get an election that turns out uh, uh, um, a, a bit strange, and 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 Trump comes in and and puts like all those plans in place. Um, your your inflation could be a three and a half or four percent again before you know it. You know. Yeah, no, exactly that, exactly that. And also talking about real rates, they, they want to keep wages real as well above inflation. Um, so that's, again, another reason why they go for maybe a bigger cut now because they know hiring slowing. If that picks up again, then you start getting the, the skill shortage kicking in again and hot wages start creeping up again. It's, it's all a fine balance for these guys, and that's why they get paid the big bucks to try and do it. But, uh, yeah, the election... 
is the next thing that, that we go on to outside of the data. And uh, obviously then what happens to inflation? Does it stop at their target or does it keep going? And then that's another conundrum for them. Who'd be a central banker, eh? Um, right, speaking of politics, um, as expected, the uh, vote yesterday on the funding package by House Speaker Johnson got uh, short shrift and was booted out. Um, this is, as we've been saying, the usual early vote horseplay stuff uh, where they try and tack on other bills and bits and bobs to the funding bill to try and get that passed. Um, so it's fallen at the first hurdle. Uh, we're probably going to see a bit more to and fro on that. Um, we have less than two weeks now until D-Day for the funding deadline. Um, it's still likely, very likely, that they kick the can. Uh, neither side will be wanting to take the blame for shutting down the government a month before the election. Um, but we're probably going to do the same old stuff where they argue and kick and scream until the 11th hour and then they'll boot it uh, probably into the new year. So the hot potato becomes uh, lands in the lap of whoever's taking the seat in January. Um, but we're still going to get some, uh, as I say, political horseplay until then. And speaking of the rate cut, well, we knew it was coming when, uh, if and when they did it. And uh, now the accusations and the uh, claimings is started. Trump's not happy with the cut, says that uh, the 50 pip move is the Fed admitting that the economy isn't doing so well? Um, Biden is up today. Biden's up today. Probably going to uh, claim the win for um, the rate coming down, inflation coming down, and uh, the fact that jobs and power painted a picture of the economy not doing too bad. I know you uh, found that funny yesterday. Uh, Biden put out a uh, tweet said he was going to uh, uh, celebrate the. Um, the economy and talk about it today and then put a load of comments out <laughs> straight yeah. after that tweet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, are we Thursday yet? <laughs> I mean, that, that was so funny. I had a big laugh uh, on my desk when I saw the light coming, the two lights coming, like I will comment on it on, on Thursday, but let's do it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was very funny. Um, yeah, I was just uh, just reading the comments in the chat. We can come to it uh, a bit later, perhaps. Yeah, uh, no worries. Um, right, so B of yeah, day. Let's, day. Let's talk about let's talk about the the best uh, central <laughs> banker uh, coming up, uh, Ryan. Uh, well, I mean, at least if you look uh, if you start from down the ladder. <laughs> well, these lot often wouldn't even be able to reach the ladder. Um, but anyway. The, the good thing about today is there's no press conference. So it's just uh, a release and statement and minutes and whatnot. Um, the next one is uh, November when we get the forecast, next forecast meeting that comes with the presser. So fortunately, it's just an announcement today. Still low expectations for any change in rates, um, though uh, I think the expectations have ticked up slightly after the 50 from the Fed, um, but just... Whether it changes Bailey's uh, or their statement or whatever, the 50, I don't know. They may sound a touch more dovish. Uh, as always, we're going to need to look at the votes. Let's get those up so everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, so we are expecting a 7-2 unchanged. There's some looking for an 8-1, so there are thereabouts. We know it will definitely be a 1 because Dingra will likely continue to vote for a cut. Um, but... Uh, so 8172 is the large expectations, okay, to keep rates unchanged. Um, anything higher in the cut column um, will indicate that maybe a cut is closer than expected. It will be a, it's a way that they can signal perhaps uh, a cut's coming maybe at the next meeting. If, if we see a uh, something like a 5-4, uh, in favour of unchanged, then uh, we could probably assume that the next meeting we're going to get a cut. 6-3 um, will look a little bit dovish as well, but eight one seven two is what's expected, so little reaction likely mm. from that. And then in the statement minutes and whatever, we'll get to see, we'll get to hear how they feel things have progressed since their, since last inflation numbers, last data, so on and so forth. So not expecting anything massive, uh, the market, as I say, might be leaning a little bit more dovishly after the Fed. Um, so there's a risk if they run dovish, 
that we see the pound gain. Uh, I think Cable is maybe the best opportunity if they are pretty dovish um, because, as you can see, dollars looking uh, pretty weak against a lot of these pairs. So if you get a dip in Cable, that's probably going to be uh, at risk of a snapback, and I'm going to be looking at that, that one very carefully. Uh, Euro Sterling, I've still got my BDI on, but it's a, it's a bit of a make or break what happens down here. If, if we get through this BOE, and even if they're dovish, and we don't break this level, then I think I'm going to start to knock it into some longs. But I'm going to be keeping a close eye on cable for that volatility difference. Uh, Kay, your view? Yeah, yeah, I uh, I agree on the cable fully. Um, uh, there, there's, there's a bit of uncertainty around the new uh, the new person, right, Taylor? Um, could he be like the six, the third for the to 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 have a six three, or is he already included in the seven in the two of the seven two? I I, I don't know. I think six three may be yeah Taylor in there, the new one. Um, I and I also would uh, would like. To draw the attention to to the quantitative tightening because um, there is it could be just the kicker if if not a lot else is uh, is happening there because um, if they want to keep it at a at hundred billion we've got eighty seven uh, billion about to uh, mature in the next twelve months already so they could bring it down I think it's now 44, 45 or so. Uh, the 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 actual QT they are selling uh, bonds, but they could bring it down to like 13 billion to to stick to their hundred plan. If they if they go above the 13 billion door, uh, well, I mean 13 give and take, you know, 15. Uh, let's call it 15. Uh, if they if they stick above, that means that their quantitative tightening is uh, is actually going up uh, in, in next year. So uh, that could be a little bit of a kicker if the rest of the report is is extremely neutral. And lastly, I just don't want to completely rule out the possibility. I know that that, that it's like ninety percent done that they don't change. But uh, as I've been saying this week, we have we have two months of flat growth. Could they take it as an excuse now that the Fed has gone fifty? I I, I probably would say no, but I, I I wouldn't completely rule it out. Those ten fifteen percent. That they go with a sympathy cut, you know, um, and that would, in my opinion, turn sterling around, but maybe not completely versus the dollar. But uh, because I, I fully agree on the cable, by the way, but the euro sterling is is one where uh, where I say if if they are undovish today, I think that that lower end may be toast, and the main reason would simply be that. Um, at equal data, you're looking at a one and a half percent or one percent, one and a, one and a quarter, one and a half percent differential with the with the with the ECB. And uh, uh, as we have seen, UK data even in 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 the past months have not been worse. Uh, uh, on the opposite, uh, a little better than uh, in general in uh, in uh, in the EU. Okay, so I think today is it could be a bit of a make or break uh, scenario for the euro study. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And uh, Ali, no, I'm not in Euro Sterling yet. I, I still like the level, but I, I know, I know what could happen here. You know, we could see um, if they uh, are a bit dovish, we could see this rally. Uh, but then, if cables dip in and it and it screams back, then Euro Sterling will go back down again. So I think I'm I'm probably going to wait and see where we are at the close today, and maybe even where we are at the close uh, on Friday. Um, but if um, if we're still down here come Friday, we haven't broken it or we're back above it, um, then I will consider maybe trying a long, but I'll be thinking more so about sell stops in that situation to get short if it does break, um, much like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Um, if levels are going to break, I want them breaking on their own under their own steam, not just because uh, there's been an event. Uh, I mean, if we look at the S&P, that was an exact candidate uh, for that type of move and we got exactly that we had this uh, break up through the highs you know ran up 20 odd pips up to 57 and then what up we just turned right around those are not the moves you want to look for in a break this is the real move as you can see and then we've grinded back up to the highs we've messed around the highs now we've built upon the highs 
and off we go. So this is the real move. These are the fake moves that you've got to be careful about uh, when trading against the highs. Uh, I'm feeling a bit of a passenger in this one because I was I was looking for a dip back to uh, to that 70 levels after that one and uh, never got there. And I, I was halfing, and half a thought of chasing it, getting in about 81, but I don't like buying tops. So I left it and uh, it's left the station now and uh, on its merry way. So we're going to have to play the same game again up here. Where is the resistance going to come in? Um, going to have to wait and see, let the price develop. We know where the main support is right now. It's down at the break point. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. Maybe we'll get some support coming in now here at the figure, just below the figure 90s. Uh, so like we did all through this rally, You've got to let the got to let the picture develop. You've got to let the levels build up before you start thinking about where the tops are and whatever. Playing this game all over again, all these little levels that turn into bigger levels that turn into solid levels, then they turn into levels you want to trade. So, short term stuff at the moment. Uh, I know people are probably throwing uh, the extensions, fib extension, all that sort of stuff on it. Uh, but for me, I'll I'll let it uh, develop itself. Uh, right, cool. Been waffling. It's nearly quarter past already. Kay, do you want to have a look at a few bits? Well, yeah, I can. Uh, I can do. I mean, yeah. Let's look at those metals here because I know a lot of yeah. people are uh, looking at uh, at the metals, especially uh, now. Gold is pushing again uh, against those uh, those highs. Um, so to me, there's there's two ways of uh, of now looking at this. All right. Um, and I know the longer term looks even uh, looks even uh, uh, more positive than this. But but okay, yesterday we had a look above the uh, the the kind of uh, uh, equal legs here. This is the range that we had before 2730, uh, 2430, 2470, 2530. Sorry, and then you need it on top. Come, coming out somewhere, I, I think I'm a little low there, but somewhere around 90, 93, 94, whatever. We're a little look above because of the the, the algo moves and things, um, but I, there is a, a possibility here, uh, and it will depend of obviously on where the dollar goes in general. Um, and I'm still relatively well, not relatively. I'm still pretty bullish on this one in the in the long run, but. Um, there is a possibility. I don't think it's going to take as long as this one, but there is a possibility that we change the range somewhat. Okay, and and it it, it happens. You know, when 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 you when you look back, you you go onto a new level, you form a range. You go onto a new level, you form a range. You go onto a new level, you form a range. And and I'm not excluding this this possibility here, um, unless we break twenty six hundred. If we break twenty six hundred, then I think. One step at a time, we could uh, we could uh, see 26, uh, uh, 26 and a half, okay? But just keep it in mind, right? So the first real level that I had here at 25.65, I told you that was too close for comfort. Let's look at what happens at 25 and a half. Bit of an algo move below and, uh, and we bounced. What was interesting as well here is that during the Asian session, where the dollar got got bought, you know, you saw the dollar yen moving up to close to 144, uh, uh, euro dollar uh, crapping the bed down to 11070. It held 25 and a half. Okay, so now this is telling us that this is a good enough level to start to monitor. Okay, but what I'm doing for as long as we don't really break here is. Uh, and 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 people in our room uh, will have seen what I've done. Uh, as I said, I've let some go because of the the risk of the the FOMC, and I will be buying back. That's what I did. Twenty five sixty, twenty five fifty. I bought some. Now today, I've done again exactly the same thing because I don't know whether we are going to break yet or not. Letting some go against it, but I think if it breaks twenty six, it's it's. It's probably going to. I don't know whether the market is going to to respect this this twenty six fifteen. I think there is a potential, especially also looking at equity markets, looking at the global uh, state of, of of the dollar and and things like Aussie and things are pushing through as well. Um, this this is a this is potentially uh, made for for twenty six fifties, but always respect the ranges. Okay, um, silver did about the same i told you right watch this 30 figure a quarter we went below stop run and then we started to bounce again and now we are 
again uh, against this, this zone here. Yes, we could argue that we broke the prior high and we are holding. Yep, okay, no problem. And I think this, this, this is the scenario also because where Powell was, uh, um, this was what I was looking for as well in the statement. Is he going to be supportive for the economy? Yes, they, they seem to be supportive for the economy. So I do think that, that the silver has the potential over time to get to 32 and a half. I'd love to see door break above 31.45 to, 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 to do that next buck. And uh, why not higher? But then, then we'll look at stuff uh, at stuff afterwards. Um, the one that we need to keep an eye on here as well today, hey, Aussie. Aussie is pushing. <clears throat> and um, I know some people have this trend line already in the, the, in the 68.30s here, but I have it a little bit higher, uh, around 68.60. But we are now in the process of of breaking 68 and a, and a quarter it looks and we're trading just above 30 still a bit fragile obviously uh we we have seen that many times we have a, we have a little bit of a break and then come down but let's wait for also confirmation to really say that we are pushing and and it is it is possible for as long as risk Aussie is a risk currency, right? And Aussie is a commodity currency. Commodities are pushing higher. Risk is pushing higher. We had an unemployment report, which on the surface was good, but the creation were, were merely uh, part-time jobs. So I'm not looking at that as an overly uh, um, brand-breaking or, or uh, record-breaking um, uh, jobs report. I don't think it is, uh, and, and because I... Don't like the balance between uh, a flat uh, full-time job and, uh, and and all the job creations being in part-time. But the market takes it and takes it positively. I think for a couple of other reasons too. But wait, um, if if you're if you're in the Aussie, um, keep a very close eye on uh, on this one here. But if this goes through 6870, then I think we could be off to the races. Okay, um, I'm just looking at the time. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through all the yen pairs, but uh, I, as I was saying, we don't expect the Bank of Japan to move this time. Um, and look at what happened in, in, in most of the yen pairs. First of all, risk. Secondly, the market got their 50, but the market already front ran this, this move. Okay, So the bond market stalled. The, the bond market is not is not accelerating to the top side. Yield markets is not accelerating to the downside. So that means that there are still yield differences in there, and it's positive. And we are in a positive risk market right now. So look at those yen pairs. It does seem to me that the yen could could end up being a loser of this central bank fest, especially if uh, if if Sterling, if Bank of England is not dovish today. If they are not overly dovish today, um, we we are trying to break. It's a bit too steep for my liking, but but we are breaking above 188.30. Look at this level for when when they will come out the Bank of England. But also look at this one, the 38.2 around one 180. If this goes through, that's probably going to help all those yen pairs to to be to be bid. So if you're a dollar yen trader today. Don't look at dollar yen only for guidance, okay? Because all the rest of the yen of the dollar pairs are a bit under the cush, as we can see. But if the dollar yen is bit, and that is due, due to all those crosses and due to the risk environment, okay? So watch out. If you want to be short dollars, I'm just saying perhaps the dollar yen is not your best instrument uh, today. And with that, Ryan, back over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Definitely a day where not all dollars are the same, and uh, that's evident. So, uh, yeah, we'll try and uh, never get our way through all that today. Um, take care over the B of E, trade safe as always. We've got a little bit of data from the US later on. Uh, keep an eye on that. <laughs> this will be the perfect time for initial jobless claims to put a wonky one um, after the FOMC. So, yeah, like, keep an eye, <laughs> keep an eye on that as well. Well, a two hundred, a two hundred k print today. Uh, yeah, you know it, you know it. Um, all right, have a good one, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you up tomorrow. Cheers, all. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.